Boys, I want to talk about something that some of you may have heard and what I suspect none of you have heard about at all. Back in 1760, between the years 1760 and 1840, the Western world went under a change that came to define all of our lives. That change was known as the Industrial Revolution. It began when men created machines to do the work en masse that man had previously done by their own hands. This Industrial Revolution happened in two waves, 1760 to 1840 and then 1870 to 1914. These industrialists and these uh, inventors were pushing upon the boundaries of technology to push what was possible according to man's ability to manipulate mechanisms in machinery to do processes for man. This came to redefine our economic practice and moved us from the feudal age to the industrial age. These early industrialists, like William Allen, like Charles Babbage, like John Cadbury, some of these names might sound familiar, or Louis Daguerre, when they invented these new machines, they had no way of knowing that 200 years later, their inventions would lead to the ecological collapse that we are now living in at this moment in time. They had no way of knowing, they had no way of knowing that 200 years later, that their inventions would damage the biological ecosystem and lead to the extermination of multiple species. Brother, if you shut up, you might learn something. You might learn something. I am trying to teach. Listen, because we're not talking about that. Good. Your brother is an ignorant man, demonstrating the ignorance of his prophet Muhammad, who was also an ignorant man. So, guys, you'll just have to listen to me because we do have to deal with these kinds of behaviours. So, these industrialists revolutionized our world because they worship the god of the machine at the altar of the innovation in the cult of technology and since the time of the industrial revolution we human beings have been doing the same now the industrial revolution when it came about ladies and gentlemen was not greeted with worldwide acclaim. People did not understand the changes that they were living in at the time. It's only in retrospect that we understand how the Industrial Revolution has changed our lives and changed our world. It changed our economic practice. It changed the habits of our lives, the rhythms of our lives, where we live, how we live, how we make war, how we do medicine. It changed everything. Well, right now, ladies and gentlemen, without our knowledge, we are living in the midst of a new revolution. It is called the genetic revolution, and it is happening in our lifetimes. In our lifetimes, Human beings have learned to map the entirety of the human genome. In our lifetimes, human beings have learned how to snip and cut and to stitch into the human genome, genomes of other species. We are doing it right now as we speak. And the technology that we are using to do this 
is not expensive. It's technology that you can use to do it on a basic level that you can buy from Amazon. This genetic revolution that we are living in right now, we are the generation that is equivalent to 1760, that saw the birth of the Industrial Revolution but were oblivious to the implications of the revolution as it goes forward. The genetic revolution is here, it is now, and it will come to define our lives, how we live, how we organize society, how we do medicine, and how we do war. The genetic revolution has massive implications for all of us, and most of us are completely ignorant of its existence or of its implications. Let me give you some examples. They are using genetic engineering to wipe out the mosquito that spreads malaria in Burkina Faso. The New Zealand government considered using genetic engineering to wipe out rats and two other forms of marsupials. Those are mammals. If they can use genetic engineering to wipe out mosquitoes, rats and other mammals, that same kind of engineering can be used to wipe out people. Or worse, it can be used to wipe out kinds of people. The power of genetic engineering is not being discussed and it needs to be discussed. It is not being governed and it needs to be governed. Imagine a world in which someone says to you, we can change the color of your baby's eyes if you don't want them to be brown. How much more of a leap is it to say that if you want, we can change the color of their skin? If they can change the color of their hair, they can change the color of their skin. How about we can wipe out autism or deafness? Well, what about wiping out people that are gay? Do you see the problem? We human beings have arrived at the threshold of a power that we do not have the wisdom or the emotional intelligence to control. Once we manipulate the genome, how do we control it once it is interacting with the wild? How can you control its mutations? How can you control its implications? Our knowledge of the interaction of biodiversity is at its beginning. Just as our knowledge of the ecology of the planet was at its beginning in the industrial age. Ladies and gentlemen, those that do not learn from history are bound to repeat history. We messed up the ecology of the planet because we industrialized the world without understanding the implications of industrialization on the planet's environment. We have learned the power of human genetics without the wisdom to control them. And we have done so because we worship the God of the machine. The fault is within ourselves. We worship a God of our own pride, 
of our own making. We worship technology at the altar of innovation. We are enchanted by innovation. We are obsessed with the ability that we can do something. We never stop to ask the question whether we should do something. And we worship at the altar of innovation because we follow the cult of technology. We love technology. And this brother who is interfering right now in this discussion is distracting you, bro. I would advise you not to listen to his lies, but when he has told you his lies, come and talk to me and I will correct the lies that he tells you. So, we are enchanted by technology. We love new technology and we have a culture that says that if we can do something, we should do something. This technology has already demonstrated its potential for harm. We are using it to wipe out entire species of animals. And there are people who are using this technology outside of any law. They're called biohackers. They are already using it to try and create illuminous dogs. They are already using it to try and create ears that grow out of your arm. They're already trying to use it to make you a muscle-bound hunk, absence of any exercise and absence of any steroids. This technology will lead in our lifetime to the creation of trilineal human beings. Human beings with the genetics of three parents, not two. That will happen in your lifetime. It is possible that a human being will be artificially created in a lab in your lifetime. So what is the cure to this, and this problem? We must approach technology with wisdom and we must approach technology with humility. The first story of the Bible was the story that man has repeated again and again and again in different ways. We have tried to make ourselves God. And every time that we try to make ourselves God, it has ended in disaster. When will we learn the lesson of the Bible that we are not God and we should approach these kinds of things with humility. Don't let pride in our own knowledge guide us. Let humility in our own weaknesses guide us in what we do with technology. This is what Christianity has to say. It is a counsel that humanity needs to hear. Let the humility of the knowledge of our foibles and failings guide our use of technology, not our pride in our knowledge, but our knowledge of our vices. Let that be our guide. Stop trying to be God. Approach these things with humility. And before I finish for questions, I am fully aware that like King Canute, who stood before the oceans and tried to tell the tides not to come in, that my one solitary voice is like trying to tell the whole of society to reverse course. But if we don't learn the lessons of the Industrial Revolution, then as we deal with the disaster 
of the Industrial Revolution, we will end up having to deal with the disaster of the genetic revolution compounded on top and the weaponization of genetic engineering. The American government has already invested money into the research of genetic engineering and has done so through its military wing. Why would the military wing of the USA government invest in genetic engineering? Consider the dangers, my friends, that we are stumbling into because of our ignorance and our pride and because we are worshipping a false god at a false altar in a false religion. Any questions? When did Jesus die? When did Jesus die? Any, the, the brother asks the question. You have no answer. The brother asks the question, who is the false God and the false altar? The liberal modern West and modern society worships the God of the machine at the altar of innovation in the cult of technology. And that will be our destruction. Any other questions? When did Jesus die? Yeah, what year? Should we go back to Hamish living then? Go back to the time and give up all machinery and bikes and everything? Go back to those like they live in America? So the brother asks, should we go back to Amish times and live as if we lived before the inventions of the industrial age? I'm about to answer, sir. Patience, please. So, the answer to that question is no. But we should approach the use of technology not guided by our pride in our knowledge, but in the knowledge and humility of our weaknesses. And we should allow the knowledge of our weaknesses to let humility guide us in what technology we use and what technology we don't use. All right to use the internet, cameras, machinery, car manufacturing, van all cars, use cars. Is this a question? So the question is, again... Can we have penny, can we go to penny farming, a big wheel and a little wheel? So allow me to answer the question. Your multiple examples are not necessary. One was sufficient. However, the question is, should we go back to a more rudimentary use of technology? And the answer is that each aspect of technology should be assessed based upon our ability to misuse that technology. And when, when, that technology is defined to be too dangerous. We should stop using it. We have already passed the point of saying that some technologies should not be used. Nuclear weapons, genetic engineering, two examples. Sorry? Industrial revolution is entirely bad, which I think even, even Christians would disagree with. So things like Tony Blair will. Sorry, don't be rude, I'm listening to him. Like it should be televised um, evangelicals that have been able to reach more people than so many individual preacher could. So should we can't just judge this technology as good or bad, even even if we have a video of judgment so I'm like saying we should stop now. Okay, um, so the brother asks a fair question. We can't simply categorize technology as good or bad. He didn't listen to what I've been saying properly. I did not categorize technology as good or bad. I gave us a new way of thinking, a new matrix of thinking about how we approach technology. Currently the approach is we are enchanted by our ability to do things and so we do them. We push back 
on the boundaries of technology. But the reality is we should approach technology with humility, that our worst will often use technology for the worst. And so we should ride back and assess technology based upon its good or bad and based upon its cumulative effect. And to answer your question about the industrial world, it is absolutely true that many goods have come from the industrial revolution, but I believe that within the next few generations, the great evil that will come out of the industrial revolution will outweigh all of its many goods. Ecological collapse. We're living through, do you recognize that we're living through an extinction level event right now? Do you recognize that? Do you recognize that that is because the industrialized world and human population has put such a weight on the ecologies of the planet that they're collapsing under the weight? Do you think that that outweighs the goods that the industrial world has done? Well, I think you're in, I, I disagree on definition of the fact that you think... That well, answer my question. Uh, uh, can I say, but I, I can't really answer yes or no if I don't, if we're not working the same definition. Go on. I, I think, do you, you believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, that it's inherent in uh, industrial technology, it's inherent that that will lead to ecological collapse, right? Yeah. I'm saying the industrial world, the industrialization of the planet is leading to ecological collapse. But I don't think I, is that I, true? Yes, I do. But I don't think it's inherent that it will. I think we can use these technologies in responsible ways that doesn't inherently lead to this. And I think, personally, and this is obviously just my opinion. Do you want to come closer? Because I think me and you could have an in interesting conversation.